Hello, friends. Welcome to Noonish Prayer for Thursday, June 11th, recorded on Wednesday evening, June 10th, because I have a conflict today that will not allow me to be with you exactly at the noon hour, so I'm recording it the previous night. Um, before we begin for today, I just want to share two things with you. Uh, both of which were already posted on Facebook, so if you've already seen these things, I apologize for repeating myself, but they're just things that I want to share with you. Um, the first is that the nicest thing happened yesterday when I got the mail from church. I found in it a letter from the people of Christ Hamilton Lutheran Church up in Stroudsburg. They had sent a letter to me um, and I suppose probably to all the other pastors in the area and you know we're not even really right in the immediate Stroudsburg area but they had sent a letter to me um, and to other leaders just to say you know um, times have been really hard and we're thinking of you we know you're going to extraordinary lengths to try to keep your people connected and we appreciate you and we're praying for you and by the way here have a, um, a face covering, a mask on us, and uh, I even kind of love this. It's in green because we're in now in the green liturgical season. I had been wondering if my purple mask was going to really look okay with my green stole, so I, I'm also glad for one. But I just thought it was the nicest thing to see one congregation reaching out to another congregation's leaders who's not really close by and that they don't really know but they are just letting us know that they are encouraging us in our faith and in our work and uh, it was really a very wonderful thing as much as this pandemic has brought um, so many negative things it also certainly opens up opportunities for us to think differently, um, to find new ways of encouraging one another in our faith. And so I ask you please to join me in praying for the people of Christ Hamilton, uh, that they too might be encouraged and strengthened in their ministry. The other thing I wanted to share with you is that I did post a summary on Facebook of, uh, of what our Zoom Bible study was like on Wednesday evening. I hope that you have gotten a chance to listen to it. If you hadn't, haven't, uh, please go back on our Facebook page and find it. I invite you to, to listen to it, and perhaps it will even encourage you to uh, to join us next time around, which won't be next Wednesday, but the following Wednesday, uh, when we will meet again for Zoom Bible study. And I'm very proud of myself. We kept it to 40 minutes, both because that's the Zoom limit on our free account, but also perhaps even more importantly, because uh, I want you to know that Bible study does not have to be anything scary or long or drawn out, but simply a carved out space of time when you can get together with your brothers and sisters in Christ and open the scriptures together. And so I hope you, you um, will enjoy listening to the summary and even more, I hope that you'll be inspired and encouraged to join us next time around. Let us pray. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue on our journey through the book of Acts, having reached the fourth chapter. While Peter and John were addressing the people, the priests, the chief of the temple police, and some Sadducees came up, indignant that these upstart apostles were instructing the people and proclaiming that the resurrection from the dead had taken place in Jesus. They arrested them and threw them in jail until morning, for by now it was late in the evening. But many of those who listened had already believed the message in round numbers about 5,000. The next day a meeting was called in Jerusalem. The rulers, religious leaders, religion scholars, Annas, the chief priest, Caiaphas, John, Alexander, everybody who was anybody was there. They stood Peter and John in the middle of the room and grilled them. Who put you in charge here? What business do you have doing this? With that, Peter full of the Holy Spirit, let loose. Rulers and leaders of the people, if we have been brought to trial today for helping a sick man put under investigation regarding this healing, I'll be completely frank with you. We have nothing to hide. By the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the one you killed on a cross, the one God raised from the dead, by means of his name, this man stands before you healthy and whole. Jesus is the stone you masons threw out, which is now the cornerstone. Salvation comes no other way. No other name has been or will be given to us by which we can be saved. Only this one. They couldn't take their eyes off of them. Peter and John standing there so confident, so sure of themselves. Their fascination deepened when they realized these two were laymen with no training in scripture or formal education. They recognized them as companions of Jesus, but with the man right before them, seeing him standing there so upright, so healed, what could they say against that? They sent them out of the room so they could work out a plan. They talked it over. What can we do with these men? By now it's known all over town that a miracle has occurred and that they are behind it. There's no way we can refute that. But so that it doesn't go any further, let's silence them with threats so they won't dare to use Jesus' name ever again with anyone. They called them back and warned them that they were on no account ever again to speak or teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John spoke right back. Whether it's right in God's eyes to listen to you rather than to God, you decide. As for us, there's no question. We can't keep quiet about what we've seen and heard. The religious leaders renewed their threats, but then released them. They couldn't come up with a charge that would stick, that would keep them in jail. The people wouldn't have stood for it. They were all praising God over what had happened. The man who had been miraculously healed was over 40 years old. Here ends the reading from the book of Acts. Show us your mercy, O God, and grant us your salvation. Give us the joy of your saving help again, and sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Give peace in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Keep the nations under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and sustain me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O God, 
give us grace to set a good example to all among whom we live, to be just and true in all our dealings, to be strict and conscientious in the discharge of every duty, pure and temperate in our dealings, pure and temperate in all enjoyment, gracious and generous and courteous toward all, so that the mind of Jesus Christ may be formed in us and all may know that we are his disciples, in whose name we pray. Amen. O God, in you we live and move and have our being. Guide and govern us in this day by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but remember that always we are walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The fruit of the Spirit with which I am sending you out each day this week is this, the gift of patience. And so hear these words from Romans 12, verse 12. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering persevere in prayer. As you go about the rest of your day, may you find reason to rejoice in hope. May you find patience in your suffering. And may you persevere in prayer. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.